your dad, the most awesomest dad around, Justin Allen, and his most awesome co-host, the master brewer himself, the brew, Joshua Kunkel. Grab a cold one, kick back and relax, and enjoy the show. Cheers, everybody. They're about six feet tall, 300 pounds. Yay. Homer Simpson's now a rapper. <laughs> Homer is a rapper. I like it. I feel like we almost had a mashup on our hands with that one. We did. I, I That was uh, the Beer Dad's uh, hand at becoming a DJ and mixing in Homer Simpson with some uh, gangster rap. So there that, you go, yeah. That was, that's how that went. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Beer Dad and Brood podcast. As always, I'm your host, the Beer Dad himself, Justin Allen, and I am joined by my most awesome co-host and most awesome because today, today is your birthday. Yes, yes. Howdy Joshua how? Kunkel, here he is, the yes. Brood man himself. Happy birthday, sir. Well, thank you, sir. I'm glad to be here. Um, this is a pretty awesome little setup you, uh, you know, swung for us yeah, here. So that's. I, uh, I figure things out here at the Beard Adam Brew yeah, Podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, um, as you can probably hear in the background, don't you don't normally hear what sounds like a live DJ in the background at the Beard Adam Brew Podcast. We like to keep the noise in the background to a minimum because people like to hear what we're talking about and hear about the beers. But today is a special occasion. It's your birthday, yep, so we yep. came down here to San Diego, California. We are here at Savage Wood Brewing in San Diego, California. More importantly, Strips Ranch, right next to where the Beer Dad grew up in Mirror Mesa. So we are here, and we're at Savage Wood Brewing, and we're here for a very special night because not only is it your birthday, Josh, but tonight's a special release for a beer, uh, a collaboration beer that a uh, good friend of mine, Ryan, his company, Gain Mana, Mano Pano, nice, here local nice. here to San Diego. Uh, as well as local beer brand, another San Diego uh, clothing and accessory company. They collaborated with Savage Wood Brewing to make the 619 Day IPA, which we nice. have lined up here for our show, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Nice, nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to try it. So uh, we do, we're do. we going to have some special guests come on the show here, uh, but for right now we have a returning guest, Mr. Paramedico Extremo, Jose Orozco. Hey, he's, <laughs> he's a man of very little words. You get him drinking though, and that changes a little bit. Oh yeah, I I, I can I can recollect uh, to a three a.m. in a Walmart at at, at some point. <laughs> yeah, it changes a lot. The, yeah. the night is still young, yes. gentlemen. <laughs> so also joining us for the very first time, Andrew. Hello, how you doing? Say hi to the folks in podcast land. Hey, how's it going? All right, there. So. So Andrew is uh, here. He lives here in San Diego in Point Loma, correct, sir? That's correct. All right. So that's a really nice area. Um, He's a sailor who likes to sail. So. He is a sailor. <laughs> I, have you ever met a sailor who doesn't like to sail? You know, believe it or not, I yeah, think those yeah. people do exist. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, Justin, didn't you join the Navy? Let's not talk about my day I signed up after 9-11 and then changed my plans. Let's not talk about oh, that because you good. bring it up all the time. Uh, well, <laughs> we, would be, we, we would be transporting, you know, a really nice old veteran on the ambulance, and he would say, hey, my partner here was in the Navy, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I joined and changed my mind. So, no, that did not happen. So, anyways, all right, so we're um, we're gonna get started. Oh no, yeah, no, we're good. Oh. No, no, it's perfect. We're good. Yeah. Actually, it's it's awesome. It's like it's like background noise, man. I love it. It's it's just like we have our own soundtrack now for the podcast. It's awesome. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. Joshua. Justin. Nice to meet you guys. All right, I've got um, yeah, yeah, come on in. So we, there you go. Howdy. We just got joined by the uh, proprietor of this place. This is uh, 
uh, hold on, I wrote this down because I don't want to mess this up. This is my first time meeting you. Daryl Brown, but also I got some dirt on you, a.k.a. Lance Savagewood. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, so Very cool. we're here. Uh, great establishment. Thanks for having us out here tonight. So we're excited to try your beers. We may or may have not sampled some already. So <laughs> I, I would expect nothing less from you guys. All right, well, I appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to sit here and record. We're going to sit down with Ryan and talk about his uh, clothing brand and sample your beers and awesome. review your beers and have a good time. Thanks for having us. Not a problem. Thank you for coming out. I hope you guys have a good time. Oh, yeah. It. Definitely looking forward. Uh, right, real, yeah. real, real quick, uh, Daryl, just uh, tell us a little bit about your brewery. How long have you been in business and what got you started? Uh, so, like 90% of the San Diego breweries, I was a home brewer that yeah. won some awards, did really good, and decided I wanted to do this. Um, I bought this place in the end of 2017. It was another brewery that went out of business. Okay. I live right around the corner. It just kind of made sense. Awesome. So I'm coming up on my three-year anniversary at the end of this year. Oh, perfect. Well, congratulations. Nice. And, uh, yeah, thanks for keeping the craft beer industry going. I appreciate it. Thank and you, guys. a home brewer right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you haven't been able to meet Josh yet. So Josh, it's also his birthday here today. So we're Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. Thank um, you. But Josh is actually the president of the Coachella Valley Home Brew Club. Oh, nice. So he's, <laughs> Matt, he's into it, and he's, like yourself, has won many awards with his home brews. Actually, Coachella Valley Brewing brewed one of his one of my favorite beers that he makes, the Opa, uh, and uh, he he's he's been around the block. And actually, the last brew fest that we had, what was it, Props and Hops out in Palm Springs? Uh-huh. His club, they it was a mix of his club and another club, but they had like I don't know six beers I think on tap. Their line was ten times longer than Hangar 24, which is one of the big boys. They were right next to him. So, yeah, he knows how to brew beer. So you guys might hit it off here and talk about beer. We keep a home brewer collaboration on as as much as possible. That's awesome. I I love seeing that. Whenever you're ready, send us a recipe. We'll scale it up, and we'll do it up. Sounds good. All right, man. We'll talk shop later. That's for sure. All right. Appreciate it. It Pleasure being here, Daryl. Sweet. Awesome. It just goes to show you, man, the home brew, home brewer and every, all of us, man. Yeah. We always have big dreams, and some people uh, are able to make, make the it. most of them. And right. this place is uh, fucking, it's, it's, it's hopping, nice. man. It's, yeah. it's I like great. It. A lot of people here having a good time, enjoying themselves. I see them repping uh, uh, Ryan's brand, the uh, Gain Mana, and they got some San Diego swag. And then I also see local beer brand hats. And like I said, the beer dad's got to pick him out, pick himself up one of those uh beer opener hats oh, for yeah. sure i mean those, those things are a trip man i remember seeing them back in the day and thinking like i'm not a hat guy but i'd probably wear that I'd pro- just for the for the fucking sake of just like pop, here you go <laughs> absolutely <laughs> all right so gentlemen let's have some beer yeah of course yeah, yeah, yeah. all right so this one is uh, the, the very first beer we have that we're gonna have from our lineup here from savage wood is the exquisite blonde so it's a blonde exquisite blonde I always kind of like an exquisite blonde. I know you like blondes. But I do like blondes. I do like mine exquisite. They yeah. do say blondes have more fun. They do. And I imagine how much more fun they have when they're exquisite. I wonder brunettes have. I it. like her thinking. I feel like brunettes are the ones that you got to watch out for, right? right. Your right. wife's a brunette, so I think you got to watch out for them, right? She's like a brunette, dark hair type of individual. And she's Hispanic, so it's like a double... Uh, that is a whole yeah. lot of fire right there. Yeah. So. There's a lot of warning tape there, but yeah. I still cut Red flag it. warning. Yeah. No. We, lo- we love you, Isara. I yeah. know you're listening. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers, everybody. Happy cheers. birthday, Joshua. Happy birthday, Josh. Happy birthday, Josh. Let's cheers. have some exquisite blonde. That is... Uh, so this is one of their flagships. Um, by the way, if you guys come into Savage Wood... Say hi to Miguel and say hi to Leanne, the awesome beer tenders that were up front. Joshua found out about Miguel. We talked about him on our live Instagram. He likes to grow hops. So awesome. But uh, he served up, the, up these beers. He gave us a nice lineup. Um, so I'm expecting some good things. Based upon our first beer, this blonde is really good. Very I was going to say, uh, I'm definitely getting like a nice little fruity overtone yeah, to the whole thing. Definitely a little stone fruit, I think. Yeah. Yep. So it's probably from the hop. I, I didn't quite get the hop uh, notes on the board there, but it looked like they had some pretty uh, kind of like a wide array there going on. Yeah. So, but I'm liking this. It's I love good. the smell so, of it. So, uh, Jose, I know you like your blondes, and normally you like IPAs, but what do you think of this blonde beer, this exquisite blonde? Kind of reminds me of the the Firestone IPA, the 805 one. 805? Yeah. Let me, let me, let me taste another swig here. I think the, the aftertaste, not so much up front, but like, 
Yeah, because up front I'm getting the fruit taste, but right, yeah, right. I get the, you on that aftertaste. The, the lingering. That's that's where I get the 805. Well, okay. that's, that's kind of in the, the style, so yeah. I mean, you yeah. can't it's really go wrong with it. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it, it's good. Like me, when I think of blondes, I think of cheerleaders. I know that's kind of bad, but... <laughs> That's just what it is. And Jose, this is 2020. I need you to be politically correct, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I think more of a cheerleader beer. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> Let me clarify <laughs> Let that. Let me clarify right. that. We, we, what you like to call cheerleader beer, Josh and I like to call lawnmower beer. So this is something that the beer dad, one day he will have his ride on lawnmower, mark my words. But the beer dad would love to have this blonde while he's on his lawnmower and enjoy it on a hot summer day because it's refreshing. Oh, it's the only blonde that your wife will let you have. That's, That's probably, not her. That's probably true. Uh, thank you, Leanne. Thanks for coming and uh, taking care of us. Appreciate it. So, uh, anyways. I was still using that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, Andrew, what do you think of this uh, exquisite blonde, sir? Ah, it's good. You know, I usually don't uh, drink uh, blondes that often, but uh, you're right about, you know, to be perfect on a hot summer day, riding a lawnmower. There you uh, go. I'm see? right there with you on that one. Uh, I keep th- harkening back to the desert, you know, where, uh, where I live, and it's like, this would actually be a pretty enjoyable beer as I'm, like, sweating my balls off. Fucking out. <laughs> 110. Yeah. So, exactly, yeah. It was 120 I, I feel, and your car's I melting. I feel like <laughs> every man's dream is to ride a ride on lawnmower. I don't know why. I just I, I feel like that's just in, in your bucket list. You know, if you just have a girl wear a T-shirt that says lawnmower. I like your thanking, Jose. Yeah. I really do. That's something that needs to be marketed. Right there. <laughs> right. Lawnmower. Right t-shirts. on lawnmower. The right night on. is still young, gentlemen. The yeah. night is still young. Well, your buddy here is a designer, isn't he? He is. You should bring that up. See if he can make you like a lawnmower riding t-shirt. I like that. Very nice. <laughs> Throw it Everybody at the wife and don't tell it. Say, don't look at the shirt. Just put it on. Just put it on. Right. Just, just put it on. <laughs> and then you, uh, get a, you can flip her around and it's got like the handles that you would for a lawnmower with like the little things that you would pull. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> like I, I already got it all set it in my head, yeah. man. It's good. Awesome. Jose's already built, constructed, and completed <laughs> the design. It's ready to go on production. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's all being an engineer, bro. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, anybody else get like the uh, like the Guinness Blonde fruit taste? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. 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 So there yeah. you go. There's there's the fruit taste that I got. Well, like I said, th- this is where this this beer does shine. Is they call it a blonde, and it tastes like a fucking blonde. It so does. that's the thing I, I do love when when beers like you say their style and they actually like follow yeah. that. Absolutely. Well, I, I would but, give this like right. a, a four and a half on my. Uh, Untapped just because it's hitting all the points. Yeah, the exactly. It's like this is a blonde and it's got a nice little few, you know, things that kind of pop and say, ooh, that's unique. I like that. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. So yeah. let's do a general consensus here for our first uh, sample beer here at Savage Wood Brewing, the exquisite blonde. Beer Dad says A-OK. Yep. I, I, I like this beer. What about you, I'm, I'm loving this beer. It's actually reminding me a little bit of uh, a passion fruit blonde I did. Okay. Awesome. So, it's got so, that nice, like, fruity texture to it. So, so. the beer, beer Dad and Brood both agree that this is a good blonde. And Jose? Well, like it. He likes it. Mikey <laughs> likes it. <laughs> Mikey likes it. And uh, Andrew, you already kind of said it, but uh, what do you think? Uh, I'm all in on the blonde, man. Uh, yeah, all in on nice. the blonde. All right. <laughs> well, perfect. We're moving right along here. All right. So, let's jump into the clap beer. Yeah. Or, uh, all right. Or do you want to skip and come back to it? Or? Um, let's do that one last. Do that one last. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go and skip into some fun territory, which is uh, traditional San Diego territory. And that is the double IPA. Yep. This is called the Hard Day IPA. And we both know you you fuckers right here like love your IPAs. Yes, so. I do. Yes, we do. So Thank this you. is, I mean, no better place than to be in the beautiful weather here in San Diego, California. Someone took my glass. And drinking a... Okay. I got a back. We got more, buddy. You're right. good. Drinking a San Diego original, a West Coast style double IPA. It's called the Hard Day IPA from Savage Wood Brewing. Uh, I've got, and if you can hear, we got Hump D in the background. Which, by the way, he once got busy in a Burger King bathroom. Can any one of you four tell me who else got busy in a Burger King bathroom? This is a pop quiz. George Washington. I don't think Burger King was around when he George Washington He asked to sit down because he was getting dizzy. 
I do remember a story about that. Yeah. Oh, wait, that was a Delaware rip. Never mind. That, that's Not Burger King. <laughs> he was fighting right. a king, Any, though. Anybody else? I'm drawing a blank here. All right. We're going to – but I, who once got busy in a Burger King bathroom? The beer dad. Because guess what? The beer dad. Guess where he met his wife? I thought you worked at Wendy's. Burger King. That's where it all started, boys. I thought you were a Wendy manager. We were after Burger King. I feel like there's a little bit of TMI, but fuck it, let's go for it. Now they can't. They're not going to be able to 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 look at her the same way. And I apologize because I know my mother-in-law's listening, but she knows we met at Burger King. That's where it all started. Right? Have it your way. Yeah. Have it your way. (laughs) Just don't ever. (laughs) <laughs> Ever eat at the Burger King out in Cabazon by them dinosaurs that Pee Wee Herman used to hang out in. <laughs> because really? not just the bathroom, not the prep table, the walk-in, the manager's office. We'll just leave it at that. So the beer dad's been around. I'm kind of glad I don't eat at Burger King in general. So, didn't all right, have, moving on. Didn't they have so, roast meat in the 90s? So next time, next time when Amber says, you know, when she gets mad at me and she says, where did I find you? The answer... Burger, Burger King, King. Home, Burger King. <laughs> home of the Whopper boys. Home of the Whopper. <laughs> Did you give her a Whopper? The double Whopper. The junior double Whopper. Whopper. Yep. <laughs> so there you go. All right. So we're gonna do. Let's do another cheers here. Cheers. This is the uh, double IPA from Savage Wood yep. Brewing, the Hard, Hard Day IPA. Let's Hard do this. Day. Loving that smell, man. Oh. Definitely West Coast right out the bat. Yeah, I'm loving it already. That's really good. Oh shit. Okay, I I'm like gonna, that. So I'm going to. Uh, That's really, really. Let fun. everybody. I'm going to let everybody in on a little secret here. Uh, the beer dad may have already sampled this because this is the one that you brought me earlier. Yes, it is. Well, I, I see. Sample's kind of a loose word. Loose boy. word. <laughs> we put our pinkies out and we chugged it. So now I'm actually getting to enjoy it, and it's actually quite good. I, I really like the fruit notes that it yeah. hits. Um, it, it basically, for a double IPA, it hits all the notes. So good job to. Uh, we're going to shout out. So we, we talked to Daryl, but we also, Zach Hayes is the, the master brewer here at Savage Wood. So if he did this, good job, Zach. Awesome Yeah. Job. No, this is a damn good fucking IPA and definitely keeps to the San Diego uh, lineage that you come to expect, you know, especially in the IPA and double IPA status. I enjoy it. So. I mean, this is right up here with, you know, drinking a Pliny, right? Pliny the Younger? Yeah. No, yeah. exactly. No. Yeah. No. Dead no. serious. And that's not kissing anybody's butt or anything, but great job, Savage Wood. This is, yeah. this is really good double IPA because usually with a double IPA, you start getting up in those 8%. You know, you hit the bitter factor, the IPUs. Yeah. Kind of up, and some of them are tolerable if they blend their mixes with the hops. But this one really, really... Everything's mixed well. It's a pleasant double IPA. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not getting the alcohol hot, you know, bite that you normally get from the high alcohol. It's actually blended very well. You get a nice little fruity citrus, maybe stone fruit. Yeah. Josh is getting into this music right now. Like It's like they just cranked the volume and said, fuck y'all, we're going to... They're like, screw that podcast over there. We're going (laughs) to turn that music up right now. Yeah. Yeah. Hey... I feel it, like, hold on, let me let me hit Jose yeah. with his favorite sound right now. <laughs> Gotta add actually, that to I the don't DJ know why club. that just, like, actually helped. I, did it, <laughs> did it, it made us feel like we're at a club right yeah, now. That's it really true. Did. Yeah. People in there are probably going to enjoy this podcast. Yeah. Probably. I was going to say, yeah. if you get up and start dancing, we will not we will not judge you. The <laughs> night is still young. Jose yeah. may end up naked. Yeah. I don't know. That's true. That oh is very God. true. Sober right. and naked. That's so so. Actually, wait. That's not that far fetched, though. Right? Yeah, I, I do that a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the beer dad and brew. Should we did on top of a sand dune? Right. <laughs> 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 oh, so the, sand dude. the beer dad and brew both agree that this double IPA is beautiful. It's a juicy, dank IPA. Yeah. I love it. Jose, what do you think? You're an IPA guy. I am an IPA guy, and I'll tell you right now, amazing. Amazing. I was going to say, his glass is empty before all of ours. I know, so. we're still yeah. sipping on right. it, and Jose's done. He, so he's a major IPA guy. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's a good it, it's a good beer. And it is. You know me, I'm not, like, I'm hit and miss with IPAs, but I I'm really not, enjoy it. Yeah. Compared to the one that you gave me last night, the, uh, the Pliny one. The, Pliny for presents. Yeah. yeah. And this one beats that one. Really? Really? Yeah. Okay. Like I told you, with that to one, I got more like a, uh, a dirty haze out of it. I don't know why. Yeah. Huh. Maybe just the way how it made 
maybe you let it sit in your garage before too long, before you maybe. put it to cool down and maybe ruined a little bit of the fermentation with it. But yeah. I will tell you this one, straight from the tap, amazing. It gives me that nice, beautiful flashback when I'm hopping off someone's, you know, either way. <laughs> uh, it is pretty delicious. And I'm going to leave it right there. I like your thinking. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, uh, Andrew, you are an IPA guy, too. What do you think of this stuff? Oh, I'm loving this, man. It's, uh, the drink's really easy for a double IPA. Uh, a lot of floral notes on it. And good hop taste. I'm, yeah, an all-around great beer. Great awesome. beer. Can't yeah. for asking anything more than that, man. No, they did a great job on this. Uh, the uh, hard day IPA. I like it. I'm thinking afterwards I might have to get another pint of this. This is actually pretty fucking good. This is something you would want after a hard day. Yes. Oh, yeah. After actually, a hard you're, day, you're, right. you're like, you're right. I would, I would, double yeah. IPA. There I'm it is. Yeah. We yeah. have just discovered where they got the name <laughs> yeah. from. It's like this like day could go fuck itself, and it's wrinkly old ass. Can we can we just go ahead and say 2020 can go fuck itself? Because I've about had it with the shit that's happening yeah. in 2020. Yeah. Where, where's the fucking flying dinosaurs with laser eyes and well, shit? Well, I mean, that's coming next. Okay. I swear, like, every, every fucking time when Wait I say... Wait till October. What, what, yeah. what well, it's October, okay. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I, every day when I see the news and I say, what worse can happen? Some shit happens. Yeah. So I'm going to stop saying that. And, well, and you and everyone else keep saying that, and it's like, fuck! Yeah, it just keeps <laughs> happening. Fuck. Well, Self-fulfilling so, prophecy, shit! So, so, so my hope is everybody fucking chill the fuck out. Go drink some beer, craft yep. brew, pick up a fucking hobby and do some home brewing, and yep. and just ride this shit out, right? Oh yeah. COVID can go fuck itself. Freaking racism can go fuck itself. All that shit can end, and fucking 2020 we can get back on track and enjoy enjoy each other's company. We're we're actually in a brewery right now, which is awesome because look at Josh. This is the first time we've been in a brewery since we saw Don up in Idlewild. Shit. What was that like three, four months ago? I feel like, yeah. yeah. So episode 15, this is going to be episode 21. So it's so been yeah. a minute. Fuck. So we've been hanging out with Jimmy, but, you know, we're inside the craft lounge. You know, it's closed. Yeah. There's no customers. This is cool. The ambiance is cool. We got people here enjoying themselves. Uh, they're somewhat respecting the social distancing. Somewhat. <laughs> we'll give them that. Well, that's um, that's the beauty of alcohol, I guess. Uh, you know, you, you got your own, like, liquid sanitation. You do. Fermented, <laughs> anything fermented is good for your gut and good for your uh, antibodies. Um, and your health. I, I'm speaking from the truth, okay? My mother-in-law is really good at this stuff. She does a lot of research. And believe it or not... I posted it on our page. Beer is good for you. Yeah. You don't need to drink 40 beers and be an alcoholic, but go to a brewery or home brew and enjoy a brew every night. It's good for you. Well, Doctor recommended. Way, yeah, I was going to say, the way, if you really want the clearest example of why beer is a good thing, look at the uh, Black Plague, the bubonic plague. The motherfuckers who are drinking the water were the ones dying. The ones drinking the beer, they kind of outlived the rest of them. Yeah, so. Isn't that called Darwinism? Pretty much. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Let them yeah. Drink, drink beer, not water. I was gonna say this is back before they even realized what the fuck was killing them. I think that's why we're all here still. Yeah. Exactly. Our ancestors were the ones drinking the beer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's some uh, German uh, ancestry here. <laughs> German, English, and apparently Irish. for Jose, Irish. Irish, yeah. He's the most Irish Mexican guy I've ever met in my life. So I like Irish beers. And music. Irish beer, Irish food, music. Irish beer, <laughs> yeah. music. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. Let's uh, pop this la- yeah. the fourth one before we get back to the collab. All right. All right. So this is one I think I've seen it. They got cans available. So this is a gnarly dude ESB. This is another one of their flagship beers here at Savage Wood Brewing. The gnarly dude. I like it. I mean, come on. What screams San Diego in beach weather other than gnarly, dude? I feel like, you know, you do the Shaka sign and we're going to go surfing. Yep. Sorry, I was checking out this chick over here. What are we drinking? We're drinking the gnarly, dude, Jose. Oh, what kind of beer is it? It's an ESB. But, yeah, say hi to Yasara because she's listening. Hey, baby. <laughs> hey, baby. Hey, baby. What's going on? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, Gnarly Dude ESB. So, this is uh, another flagship. So, the blonde is a flagship and the Gnarly Dude is a flagship. For those that don't know, ESB stands for English Special Bitter. Just throwing a little bit of uh, knowledge out there. But Thank um, you, Mr. Kunkel, for your vast <laughs> brewing knowledge. I try. I try. So, 
Either case, uh, I would say this beer, just like the rest of them, I had a pint of it earlier, uh, definitely follows suit with the ESB style and hits all the right notes. So all I'm, right. I'm definitely digging on it. All right, so gnar gnarly dude. Everybody get that gnarly dude going. I'm not really a Dos Equis fan. Oh, no. Sorry, uh, I missed that one. Sorry. I was too busy uh, drinking my beer. This has a very good uh, scent to it. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. It's a bitter. Yeah. yeah. Exactly Which is, what it says it is. Well, that's the funny thing is bitter is kind of a misnomer. I mean, you're, you're, you probably get the bitter, but it's mostly from like a burnt, hot, burnt malt character. That's your bitter. A burnt malt character. Yeah, okay. not, not from over hopping or anything, but like a burnt malt. That's where the bitter comes in. All right. So, uh, Gnarly Duty SB is what we're sampling here at Savage Wood Brewing. By the way, uh, gentlemen, we are live on Instagram one more time. Yep. So, uh, we're uh, hopefully somebody jumps on here. It is 8.30 West Coast time, so a lot of our followers are on the East Coast. Uh, but it is Friday night, so we'll uh, yeah. see. Oh, that. Speaking of the devil, her ears must have been uh, burning because the beer wife is on live <laughs> on Instagram. Beer Boys, wife. Let's hey. let. <laughs> hey, go get that girl's number you were talking to, Justin. <laughs> Don't listen to Jose. You know better than that. The one that was touching your beer, <laughs> saying that she loved your podcast. Oh, what was he, her name? He's, Tiffany. He's full of it. I'll get her. I think so, she was a blonde and a lawnmower. No, actually, <laughs> we were <laughs> drinking a blonde. That was what we started with here at oh, uh, Savage oh, Wood Brewing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you were riding the lawnmower on the blonde. <laughs> no. If I recall, Some, something like that. Uh, out of control, sir. Uh, she even said, "Oh, Jose." <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You've outed yourself, man. You outed yourself. I'm just saying, he's over there somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Somewhere. Some, somewhere around here. Where the fuck are you? Somewhere around. <laughs> so, uh, everybody that's on Instagram, you guys are actually uh, part of the podcast right yep. now because we're still recording. Right now, we are on, um, this is our third beer, yes? Yep. Yes, we yep. So, we <laughs> sampled here at Savage Wood Brewing so far for the podcast. We had the uh, exquisite blonde. Very she good was beer. Delicious. Yeah, it was good beer. Um, and we also had the uh, hard day IPA. It's a double so IPA. So far, I'd say that one's been like a crowd favorite, right? Yeah, that was yeah. pretty good. Everybody yeah. really liked the hard day. Yeah. Um, and right now, we're having the gnarly dew DSB, which is a bitter, uh, English special bitter. Um, and uh, we're saving the best for last because the reason why we're here, other than this man's birthday, say happy birthday. So yeah. and uh, Tiffany, happy birthday, and <laughs> Tiffany apparently with the blonde, birthday. who's a lawnmower fan. Oh Jesus, Jose! <laughs> Hi, Amber. So, anyways, uh, we're where's gonna, the shirt? Man? We're gonna save the six one nine day IPA for last because that's why we're here. Um, we have a collaboration beer special release here at Savage Wood Brewing. It's a collaboration with Savage Wood Brewing, uh, Gain Mana, Mano Mano, and local beer brands um, for. Uh, a special release, and we have that beer that we're saving for last, yep. and we'll have that on the podcast. You guys are on the podcast, so welcome. Yes. Um, but we're going to get back to it. We're having this uh, English uh, ESB. So far, pretty good. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's kind of like a drop down after the IPA. It is, it is. So it's maybe really that's... hard to top that IPA, that double yeah. IPA that we yeah. just had. So I, I don't know why. It's, I'm getting like a brown. Like a brown ESB ale? is pretty close. Think of like a brown ale with a bit more pep to right, it. Right, right. Pretty like, much our ESB. Like for me, this maybe I haven't had enough of this style. It is yeah. just it's blending in with the blondes that I've had, and uh, not the blondes. Speaking of your Tiffany, uh, more of the uh, speaking of Tiffany, right? Uh, the brown. <laughs> Hi, that Tiffany. I've had. How's it going? Yeah. There's no not really a Tiffany. <laughs> I pushed her away from the camera. She's not going to be in the view. Don't worry. Yeah. Good. No, no, Amber. He's good. By the way, the boys, uh, we listen to Humpty, and uh, they know what uh, Humpty once got busy in a Burger King bathroom. <laughs> Who else got busy in a Burger King bathroom, boys? You guys learned it. Knowledge is power. Who else? 
Why are you guys pointing at me? <laughs> That's all I got. Oh, oh I'm looking at okay, those guys. Okay, well, we, we, stay, stay, stay tuned. Doing, I'll take Beer Dad for 200. <laughs> beer Dad for 200. <laughs> stay tuned to the Beer Dad and Brew Podcast, and you can get that story on our show. All right. Thanks That's for a better out. response, man. That's, I, was, I was just thinking, like, we, we must point what must not be said. <laughs> uh, but, no, either way, um, I'm getting more of a brown. That crisp kind of like uh, yeah, crisp, that you would get with a brown, more of a malty backbone. Yeah, there you go. Malt, yeah, yeah. Malt, that's what I'm getting. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's I, funny because this is a style you don't see too often nowadays. Right. Like it used to be kind of like the bread and butter for all the craft beer aficionados when Budweiser and Coors kind of reigned king, but you don't really see too much of it anymore. Like the only yeah. other brewery that I know of that did something like this was a Firestone Walker. So. Like I said, I don't think I've ever had this style, so that's why I'm just associating it with browns. Yeah. And it's hitting more like a, a brown, I guess, taste bud until I get more style of this. What is it, uh, Double double Jack from Firestone Walker? I think that's an ESP. Is it? Yeah. I gotta look that up, though. Double Jack? Yeah. yeah. I think that one's an ESP. You're right. But Dude, Aaron, I'm, I'm watching, we're talking beers here, and I'm just watching, and I feel like... This is making me really happy because I'm watching all these people just having a good time, dancing, enjoying craft beer. There's no, I mean, there's no COVID. There's no pretense of bullshit. This is this is great. I mean, I I love it. How many of us are gonna pop positive now? I think we all have COVID. Oh, no, I think we all. We're all just carriers at this point, right? Yeah. It, it's like hip A. Everybody has Do you guys remember once. when we were little? Because we're in that generation. We're all about the same age. Do you guys remember the, the chicken pox parties that oh, moms yeah. used to have? My uh, my cousin had it, and my mom brought us all over to his house. And we all yeah, the and they're like, <laughs> they're like, lick your cousin's pimples. Yeah. Lick them. You're going to get chicken pox, damn it. Yeah, right? see, uh, I had like chicken pox times 10 with fucking... Uh, Meningitis, didn't he? Yeah, I had meningitis. <laughs> Poor guy. Hey, yeah. but you beat that motherfucker, and you're yes, here I right did. now. Yeah, I am here. Yeah. That's why, like, viruses and COVID, I don't think got shit on me. Yeah, Josh yeah. isn't too worried about COVID. <laughs> <laughs> we are good. We you, are. You talking to good. Mr. Fucking Survivor of Meningitis? Uh, was it West Nile and Hanta? Hey. They can all go fuck themselves. <laughs> you survived that. Jose and I survived working an ambulance in Paris, California. Let yeah, me tell you actually. Something. You got you got a good point there, man. That's true. <laughs> you got a good point. We we did pretty good for ourselves there. No offense to the people that live in Paris, but wow, it's a beautiful place. I like it. Yeah. I always told you it's the city of love. It, it, it's great for skydiving. This it is. is so. What any, the fuck are you gonna watch while you skydive? Anytime Jose and I would go 10-8 or available and ready in our oh, yeah. in our rig, right? And they would send us to Paris. This motherfucker was happy. Oh yeah. And the beer dad would be like, mother. God, I'd be like, we are going and, and to Jose a community. would be like, it's beautiful in Paris. And then, you know, to add insult to injury, the type of guy Jose is, you know, he's a sarcastic motherfucker. Jose. This guy would play French music on the radio <laughs> as, we were, as we were driving to Paris. <laughs> like hey. you're, you're, oh, oh, Paris. Exactly. Yeah, gay so, Paris. Yeah. We, oh. Meanwhile, we're running a call on a transient that just pissed and shit himself. <laughs> He's high on meth, and all he wants is a sandwich. A citizen who required our assistance. No. In this, this is why the beer dad no longer works on an ambulance, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And it makes you feel better. I used to get the croissant sandwich over at the Jack in the Box. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Just, just to just remind to, you of just Paris. Just, just to really that'll, just push it. I'll be like, oh, i got to get a croissant sandwich. We're in Paris, the city of love. Yeah. you got to do it. Jesus. Andrew's sitting here like these fucking distorted motherfuckers. Oh, uh, he's just as fucking creepy. Oh, I know. You're a sailor. I bet you got some fucking great stories, too. I can only imagine. Well, I've heard some of them, but yeah. That's that's another podcast, right? That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> Maybe later tonight like when, we're, when, yeah. when we're even drunker than we are right now, right? Yeah. Something about a poodle and Pepto-Bismol, but either way, it's for a different night. Yeah. Is that why you're walking? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Something about pre and post op? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not big, too small. Uh, all right. So I'm all done right. with the ESB. All right. Okay. So we're going to get to the, the last uh, brew here. We should put like a drum roll. This is the collaboration. So, uh, Jose, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, rallying up the troops because we need to get uh, 
everybody over here so they can tell us how they made this beer before we sample it. Who do you, uh, who do you want me to go and get? We got, we should, you, uh, you know, pour a little taster so we got enough for them. So go find Ryan. Let me see if I can see him. Is that the guy we met? Yeah. So go find him. Get him over here. Tell him to bring everybody involved in this beer. That's uh, the owner, right? The owner? No. Yeah. So Ryan is the one we met first, right. not the one that was on the podcast. Oh, okay. I think he's over there by the uh, tent, by the DJ. So meanwhile, Josh is pouring some of this delicious brew. Um, how many did you pour? I got four, but I'll, I'll get one for Andrew here. Andrew, I'll, I'll split it with Jose. Sure. I got a little more here I can give you. All right. That's so, and we need uh, we need three. Because we need some for Ryan, we need some for his friend, and we need some for uh, the owner. We need some for mine. You can take some for mine. Do I go grab another one? No, we're good. I was going to say, I mean, if we need to grab another pint to even this out, we can. Yeah. No, we're fine. All right. So, yeah, we're going to we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some guys over here uh, sampling this beer with us. Yeah. Come on in. Come so, on in. Um, all right. So, Daryl's back with us. Hey, hey. Hey, hey welcome back. Um, we're just uh, enjoying ourselves here, watching everybody have a good time. And I'm like, I feel like some, some normalcy is starting to come back here in California. And it's making me happy. A little bit. But he's making a sale right now. What's that? He's making said, a sale? He's making a sale. He'll be All here right. in a bit. We'll get him over here. So <laughs> um, so just a quick update of what we've done so far, Daryl. Um, by the way, you got some awesome beer tenders up there that hooked us up with some good beers. So Thank we you. started with your uh, exquisite blonde. Everybody loved yeah. it. I love uh, the, the fruit notes in there. I mean, I, did you actually add fruit or was that more of the hop notes? That's that, uh, that is the laurel hop. Laurel hop. Okay. Yeah. I was curious what hop, like, you get this, like, big stone fruit, almost even like a passion fruit yep. thing kind of going on. And it was like, damn, man, that really, like, pops. You can it's smell good. it. You can That's taste it. Really good job with that one. That is our flagship beer. That is the beer that made me decide to do this. Nice. Okay. Nice. Awesome. Good job with that one. Thank so you. So we like that. And then the, the second beer that we had, everybody just geeked out on it was your double IPA. Yeah. Oh, the hard day? Hard, hard day. day, man. That, that was no, like you, we, you just you just hit that West Coast note, like absolutely perfect. And for San Diego, it's like you got to do it. You know, yeah. you got to do it. So we, we were all in on that. Well, I already sampled it, but... So we have we're in this group called the Pinkies Out Posse, and we we did a chug. So I didn't get really to get to enjoy it. I chugged <laughs> it down, and that's pretty, you know, stiff beer to chug it. Yeah. But I did it. I handled it like a champion. Yeah, yeah. But but actually getting to sample it and enjoy it, it was a really good beer. You did an awesome job on that. Thank and actually, you. Uh, our good friend here, Jose, who's a paramedic, he uh, flies on a helicopter. Oh, awesome. Um, he. Uh, He, uh, last night, I, I procured some Pliny the, for president oh, yeah, yeah. from up north. And so he had that. He liked that better than Pliny for president. So wow. as a as a owner of a brewery, that should really make you feel good because <laughs> you know how Pliny is. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So, I mean, yeah. I, I don't think I'd get a better compliment on that beer. No, yeah, that's good. I was so. going to say, I mean, that was another one. You got the nice little, like, citrus notes, a little bit of the stone fruit kind of on on there, but it just blends so well. I mean, that eight and a half, man, there's no heat. It doesn't no feel heat. like eight and a half. No, it does not, man. It uh, was like it, sneaky. It was, sneaky. it was blended perfectly. Yeah. Like, I really enjoyed that beer. Like, I'm like, man, like, what sucks about that beer is, like, it's dangerous because yeah. I can drink a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to creep up on you. Oh, yeah. You, you throw yeah. it back and next thing you know, you're, you're throwing back. <laughs> <laughs> yep, for sure. So we had that uh, second. And then the third beer that we had was your... Uh, gnarly dude nice. and uh that was a really interesting flavor profile that we got on that yeah. that's another one of your flagship beers right yeah that's one of our core beers it's a it's an esb yep. which is it's a underappreciated british style of beer yep. right like a british pale ale i was just telling the guys here like you don't really see it anymore like back no. in the day when craft beer was kind of getting started 
that was kind of like the go-to style for a lot of the craft beer breweries. But it since then kind of dropped off. The only other time I've actually ever seen it was like Firestone Walker. Yeah. You know, and their double jack. But it's kind of cool to see you guys pulling it off, and you did a damn good job with it. Like, it, it pretty you. much matches the style perfectly. You get those malt notes. You get a little the, bit of that burnt kind of, like, yep. caramel going on there. Get some of the fruity esters from the yep. English yeast. Exactly. Yeah. Nice subdued bitterness. It's, you know, it's, it's definitely a brewer's beer. It's like, oh, yeah. It's a, it's a good, it's a classic. Awesome. And then we saved this beer. We're waiting yeah, for, we're, we're we got the 619 for, here. We're waiting for Ryan to come over here. So Here he is. <laughs> He's like, get the fuck over here. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're, we're excited to try this. Uh, Ryan actually invited us down here. Ryan, how you doing, buddy? Uh, dude, I'm doing awesome right now. Thank you guys man, yeah. for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Awesome. So we uh, we saved your uh, special release for last. Um, I'm stoked to try it because this kind of beer is kind of right up my alley. So not only not only is it right up my alley style-wise, but every like everything on the can art everything i mean obviously i grew up here you and i we were yeah. both marauders we're yeah marauders we're high school wow. the mecca you know the mecca i saw your hat over there i love yeah. that hat that's freaking <laughs> awesome appreciate uh, it yeah for sure uh, so we're excited to try this beer um but let's talk about it what did you guys how did you make this beer well so it first started off with 619 days so for okay. the last three years we've been celebrating 619 especially with the business but we wanted to give something special to, to you know, our community. So I reached out to Daryl just basically three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, three weeks ago. And then, you know what? He's like, we got to do something today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, do it with, now. Yeah. <laughs> like, so with the COVID, like, having, like, basically going around right now, it's like Daryl took the reins of, like, what we could do in this time frame. So like we had ideas, but he told me like, okay, to get a, do a good beer in this time frame, this is what we could do. Okay. And so it basically gave us the, the guidelines of what we could do. And then with you know summer, the whole kickoff, and then with Blood Orange, he like um he, he um basically recommended Blood Orange. It's like you know what, I love Blood Orange. Yeah, he um, doesn't. <laughs> exactly. And then my wife, she had, like her eyes lit up with Blood Orange. And then you know we didn't have to get too crazy. I think the first idea that Daryl pitched was the like a good IPA because that's what San Diego is all about. For sure. And then that was a great idea. We almost came back to that, but then with the blood orange being hot, summer's coming around. I think it was a it's a good blend of what yeah. San Diego is all about. Yeah. And with refreshing, especially like with me, I'm I'm 39, almost gonna be 40. Right <laughs> around the corner. And you know, like I love like refreshing beer right now. Oh yeah. I and believe you, I've, I've been hitting up all the German, like, craft-style German pilsners have been, like, my yes. my deal, especially living out in the desert. It's yeah, been just, like, yeah. just killing them. And we wanted to come out with a crispy boy, which we will. Yeah, nice. And then, nice. but then with the IPA, something crushable, something refreshing, and it was just a good blend. And then That's it's good. good to have, like, the expertise with um, with Daryl. So he basically guided us with what we really wanted, and it came out. I, I love it. I was I gonna say it. this is definitely pretty crushable. I, I like yes. this. I mean, you get yes. the nice little tart, almost bitter orange on the back end going on. It just kind of like opens your palate. Says, "Hey, fucking bring me more, bring me more." Yeah, you know? it's, it's definitely a summer beer. You guys kind of hit the nail on the head yeah. right yeah. there with this. The can art, all the San Diego logos from your company. Yeah. Uh, it just freaking awesome. Like the whole can screams like my childhood, where I grew up, where I'm from. <laughs> You know, of course, I don't live down here no more, but <laughs> no, it's, but it's good roots. to be back. Yeah, yeah the roots. It's good to be back for sure. So, uh, great job on this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So I want to say yeah. thank you. Yeah, and then like Rich, when he comes here, he's, so he's the one that here. did. Yeah, he's the one that did all the artwork. So like, okay. I did the SD logo, but Rich is really someone I look up to, okay. and he's been doing graphic arts maybe like 30 years, yeah. and he's really like. Everyone wants a piece of him because he's so good. 30 years, he looks 13. What are you talking exactly. about? Exactly. <laughs> he looks younger than us. He stays in good shape. Didn't well, age at all, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so right now he works for Falcon Tires. Oh, so nice. they, they locked him up. <laughs> they, yeah. they take good care of him. So he's up in, um, he's originally from San Diego, but they locked him up in, you know, LA, whatever they're yeah, okay, at. Okay. So he's, he's really talented. And then I really believe that he hasn't been um, paid 
and recognized for his talent. So that's why we partnered up with the local beer brand. That's what like our second venture is. Like my first venture is Monopono with the SD, but then the local beer brand. It's like you know what? I want to give credit where credit's due, and I want him to. I want to basically elevate Rich. Yeah. So here the can work. Like he hit the nail on the coffin. Like when we came up with um, ideas. It was basically, you know what, I want to do a throwback. And then he asked me, like, what do you think about throwback? And I was like, you know what, with San Diego, it's like, when you talk about throwback, like, uniforms with the Chargers and with the Padres, it's like always top three. Yep. You know, the baby blues, the power blues, and with the brown. The brown. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So he basically combined it that. I was going to say. Yeah, he combined <laughs> it exactly so with you guys. I don't know if you noticed our logo. Yes. I specifically yes. chose it for because the Padres were going back to the brown. Yep. And, you know, yeah. San Diego will, no matter where I live, it's always going to be in my blood. Yes. And it, I'm a huge Padre fan, as horrible as they've been. <laughs> right? I don't care. I'm still a Padre fan. And I, the guy that designed our, our logo... Uh, he's a great guy. He actually has a podcast, too, the Target Practice Podcast. Yep, yep. Oh, he, yeah. he designed this for us. I said, all right, here's the deal. You need to put our ugly mugs on there, and I need uh, a beer mug, and I need Padre colors. That's all I told him, and this is what he came up with. So he did a good job. Nice. Yeah, for sure. You got some, some camera <laughs> action over there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, talk a little bit about about your company, Ryan. We've heard from uh, Daryl. So you've got okay. a clothing company and, ex- you know, you got your hats. What? I've got to get up and take off right now? No, you can stay. Yeah, you're good. No, no. I, I, okay, no, he's <laughs> got to get up. He's got to get up right now. He's got to go. So yeah. I want to thank you guys again for coming out and doing this. Ryan, obviously. Yes. Thank you, Daryl. You me home. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes. Like, so to me, it's all about opportunity. And then Daryl from Dare Run, like, collaboration he was on board like he didn't know anything about me but then it was basically by the recommendation of House of Black nice. the coffee brewers okay. like just in um, Poway and then I thank them too and Daryl like this whole opportunity this is an awesome day especially with COVID going around and all these people coming to support us and then I want to thank everyone and we're already talking about our next collab so yeah, nice. Probably next month this time. Sounds It'll be another good. party. Sounds good. But we're well, going to have to get together with you. Yeah, we for might sure. do a collab for sure. Too. <laughs> yeah. Bring it on. We'll do it yeah. up. We, hey. we have some pretty crazy recipes we've been working on. <laughs> so hey. we're down. The crazier, the better. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. All right. All right Thank you for being an awesome guy. And thank, thank you for you. some great beer, man. Yeah. Appreciate thank it, guys. Right, thank you. Man. <laughs> cheers, brother. Thank you. Cheers. 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 All right. All right. So, so, Ryan, tell us a little bit about your your uh, your company. All right. So, I'll tell you a story from the beginning. It was like, like five years ago, for some reason, like fitness got really popular. Right. And like I can tell you, like in high school in Mesa, you would wear your worst clothes to the gym. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, I don't care about this shirt. I don't care about these shorts. And I'm going to wear this to the gym. And that's how it was. And then we started recognizing, like, people started to dress up for the gym. It's the weirdest crap I've ever heard of. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, you know, I've been working out forever. And then, so I was like, all right, let's jump on this. And then I wanted something that would mean something and about our culture in San Diego. So in San Diego, we're always in the top five of like the healthiest um, cities in the world, basically. And then I've been working out forever. And then every year we go to um, Hawaii and then we have family over there. And then it's so meaningful over there. And I believe like in the beginning in San Diego was so meaningful. It was so much of a community, it's so much laid back. And then that's, there's so much like um, transports. Right that are in here and they all know like the true culture of San Diego yeah and then so I wanted to show them what's San Diegan and that's being outdoors and then like so in Hawaii they call the land their Aina and then in San Diego like we use the land to work out like we like to be outdoors so like when we started our 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 company like we didn't think about the gym because the gym is like where you wear your worst clothes yeah and then you just do work it's right. not about selfies. It's like you do work. Yeah. You know, and then like in the, in the outdoors, that's where you you you're one with with San Diego, and we wanted to show that culture. And then like so we combined the mana pono. So mana basically means power, spiritual power. Right. Pono is to do what's right. So we wanted like a company that will transcend to everything you do in life. And at the time, I was going to Arizona State for business school. So it's like you know what? I'm going to business school on gaining mana power 
and then for doing what's right. So like this meaning that I wanted to do with fitness just basically like transcended to my school and then transcended to my family and then transcended to like my culture in San Diego. And that's what we wanted to share. And that's where Monopono comes from. And you know, that's, and then like, I always wanted to do an SD brand. Right. And then that's cause we're, we're, we're fun, man. You know, you don't know how many haters I had. Yeah. I had so many haters like, hey, if you do something from San Diego, only San Diego people will buy it. Right. And I was like, that's actually what I want. <laughs> I want to keep it local. Well, I mean, exactly. Don't forget. I mean, it, the nice thing about San Diego, and you know this because you grew up down here, is there's so many transplants down here, and obviously there's a huge military population. There might people be here from San Diego, and then they go other places, like me. You know, I'm up in the Inland Empire, but I still am true to my city. I'm still yes. true to you know, like I, I've got. I'm, I'm gonna pick up some of your hats here probably oh, before we thank leave. Thank you. Thank you. But. Uh, um, you know, like seeing stuff like the Mecca, like that's what I grew up with. You know, we called, you know, Mira Mesa the Mecca. And when I saw you made that hat, I was like, oh, my God, dude, it's high school colors. It's got the Mecca on there. Like, this is yes. dope. So, so it's not just going to be people from, you know, San Diego. People may be originally from here, but they're they're elsewhere. You know, they joined the military. Yeah. So, But you've done an amazing job. I love all your, all your, all your swag is awesome. Yeah, dude, I just want to say thank you. And then with the Mecca hat, it's crazy, like – um. We just shipped out last week, and everyone from Mara Mesa that represents the Mecca, they're all over the place. Oh, yeah. Um, Alaska, Idaho, yep. North Carolina, uh, Nevada, Florida, New York, uh, military. And the awesome thing about the military is, like, the, the shipping is, is actually affordable, which is awesome. Yeah. It's like, wherever they're at, they're in Japan. Right. We're able to ship for five bucks. Wow. So thank you for USPS, yeah. and they really support you know local military, and then you know my dad's a submariner, yeah, military. So like we get Is that, that. What brought your family here in San Diego? You know what? It's crazy. Yes, because like uh, I can tell you right now, my dad joined the military when he was 16, lied about his age, saying he was 18. <laughs> wow. You know, because yeah. like that's that's a big thing. Is like when people want to come to the United States for a land opportunity. Yeah. And then the uh, opportunity was if you wanted to join the Navy back in the day or military. Right. So, you know, they did whatever they could to be in the United States. Yeah. And then that's why, like, I'm Filipino. Um, and then, like, that's why there's so many Filipino nurses. <laughs> so there was a need for the, you Familiar know. With yeah. that, working in, on, on the ambulance and meeting many yeah, nurses. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, the United States needed um, nurses. Right. So everyone in the Philippines were like, you know what, I'm going to bust my ass for four years and then do whatever it takes to become a nurse so I because they land right. an opportunity. And then right now it's like I graduated from um, Arizona State University. Yeah. The latest thing right now is math teachers. Math teachers. It's crazy. Wow. So like math teachers in Arizona State are Filipinos. Wow. So they found out a way to come to the United States becoming a math professor, a college math professor. And that's the big thing right now. Crazy. So it, it's crazy right there. Yeah. And then like, I can tell you right now, like I never thought I had my own beer. <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah. Never million years. And like we that's first, crazy. like three months ago, we had our first um, coffee collab with House of Black. Yeah. And now it's like the beer. And then it's like just in here. Like we work together at our job and then it's uh -huh. like connecting us and then going back to Mira Mesa the Mecca so it's just like all things everything's coming, coming together right? yeah everything's coming together and then it's all love too and then it's it's all real to me yeah Th this is the thing and we talk about it on our show a lot is um and you've probably started to experience this you know being around uh, rich with the local beer brand and uh, craft beer home brewing all that kind of stuff it's one of those things that brings a bunch of people together it does and, and and like we talk about it like you could get a table and you could have people from all walks of life all religious all political <laughs> backgrounds yeah. and if if we're just enjoying ourselves and having beers like there's no fights everybody's yeah. getting along it's almost like world peace almost <laughs> yeah it's really weird i was gonna say Crazy. beer beer is world peace yeah. there's world peace and that's why like you gotta. You have to do this, Ryan. One day, put it on your bucket list. You have to go to Oktoberfest in Germany. Okay. Because you will find 
people from everywhere. I mean, it's a it's a huge tourist thing. Um, you'll you'll get uh, um, you know people. You'll have people from mm. probably from the Philippines. You'll have obviously locals, Germany, Australians, uh, Irish people, people from all over the world that go to Oktoberfest and. I, I, I could sit at a table and someone did not speak a lick of English and we would still somehow have a conversation <laughs> yeah, about Yeah, and beer. it communicates together, right? right? Yeah. So With that weird. common denominator so of beer. Weird. Yeah, and, and, and so you know how it is here in the States yeah. when you get like a, a big event or whatever, you always end up seeing security carrying people out for fights and stuff <laughs> like that. I didn't see one fight while I was at Oktoberfest, not one. I, I people, believe that people believe were that. people were up on tables dancing with each other, <laughs> yeah. hugging each other, singing, uh, singing songs that they didn't speak the language. They just figured it out, you know. I think so. there's like a, a understanding, yes. you know, like Absolutely. everyone's on the same page. Yeah. And the crazy thing is that is on my bucket list because That's my wife be. is 25 percent German. Well, there you oh. go. And so my son is, I think, 12.5 percent. <laughs> so it's in his heritage. There yes, go. exactly. There's, there's your excuse and exactly. there's your reason. So, you know, He's part Irish too, so you know Ireland you and go. Germany. So that is on the book list. For so sure. basically, what you need to do then is uh, definitely get that on your bucket list. Go whenever you uh, are going. Let me know. I'll give you a nice yeah, itinerary. Seriously, like I wouldn't even ask for the itinerary. I would ask for you guys to come. Oh man, that would be yeah. Shoot, we would be there. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, you wouldn't have to ask me twice to go to Germany <laughs> again for October. <laughs> and unfortunately, of course, with COVID, they canceled it this year. So there's a lot of disappointed oh, yeah. people. But it'll be back next year, I'm sure, for yeah. sure. I All think right. stronger than ever, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every, and everyone's going to be, like, chomping at the bit to go. So oh, yeah. exactly. did you, is this your homebrew that you brought in? Actually, no. They just sort of dropped it off. It's, it's the Adora Lavender. Oh, okay. Well, they gave uh, us a Lavender prowler. Wit. All right. Okay. So we'll get to try something. Maybe uh, where's Rich at? Let's, let's get him on. Yes, we'll yeah. get Rich on you. Here, I'll, I'll, pour, hey, I'll yeah. pour this out. We can. Uh, Dude, do you guys have a lot of cups here? Yeah. So like with COVID, you know, there's no more glasses. Well, that's right. They're I'm all thinking. cups. We got brand new cups here. <laughs> yeah. So the beer tenders, uh, Leanne and um, hold on, I don't want to make it a Miguel. They've been hooking us up. Yes. Yeah, they're I am, doing a good I'm job. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm glad they are hooking you guys up. So cheers. Have you, have you tried this one? No, no, no. I no? haven't. I actually, I'm new to this one, too. This now, is, what'd you say it was? Lavender Wit? Yeah, lavender Wit. Now, okay. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big fan of lavender. But I'm not either. I, I am going to suspend <laughs> belief for a moment here and just kind of see but what. I can smell the lavender before I even taste it. I Sadly, lavender gives me this element of, like, soap. Okay. And I have <laughs> some, I, yes. I have a hard time like getting yes, my home goods. Uh, yeah, I have a yeah. hard time getting my head wrapped around that concept. So there, and I don't know where it come, came from. I don't know. Maybe it might be a Filipino yeah, candy. Yeah, yeah. But I remember I when know. I was a kid, there was this lavender candy that was going around. It was purple. These little hard candies, and it was terrible. <laughs> I never was not a big fan. Yeah. So we'll see how this goes. All right, all right. So we'll, we'll dive in. Cheers. Cheers. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Oh, thank you, yes, thank you. Happy Juneteenth, as I like to say too. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Still got a little bit of that soap thing, but it's actually better than I thought it would be. So that's good. Mm-hmm. I can I can tolerate it. Yeah, so I already no, know I, that I, I can do it. So, you know, t- talking to um, uh, the owner here, Daryl, uh, when he's like, you know, hey, collab, like, oh, I like crazy flavors. Maybe he'd be down for some turmeric ginger. <laughs> Maybe. I Maybe. think he would because I love ginger and turmeric is, yeah. is yeah. there. So is we there. made a beer, him and I, and um, we, I mean, we're going to dial back the recipe, but the original uh, beer that we <laughs> made, there was so much turmeric that, so, you know, uh, you know turmeric because you're yes. into health. It's good for you, right? It's good for your blood. It's yes. good for your heart. So I have arthritis, so it's good for that stuff, too. Oh, yeah. Perfect, yeah, yeah. right? Anti-inflammatory. Yes. Right? Yeah, so yeah. Um, so we made this beer, and we, we, we used way, way, way too much turmeric. <laughs> the ginger wasn't too bad, but it actually came through at the it's, end. It's interesting. It ended up dominating over the turmeric yeah. as we aged the beer. Yeah. So, so you want me to? Yeah. Tell them the <laughs> breakdown. How much turmeric was in there? Okay. So when we did this five-gallon batch of beer, we ended up using two pounds of powdered turmeric okay. and one pound of ginger. Now, afterwards, when we realized we w- used way too much turmeric, you know, I said, what is the daily dose of turmeric if you're doing it for health reasons? 
And the daily dose is something like 1,600 milligrams or something like that, or 1,200 milligrams. And I was like, well, compared to what we put in there on it for a 12-ounce beer, we ended up doing something like 16 times the amount <laughs> of that daily dose. So basically, I could drink one of those beers and tell because my wife, she's all about health. Oh, yeah. She, Take your turmeric pills. I could tell her I drank that beer. I don't need turmeric pills for at least three months. <laughs> yeah. So we'll scale it back next time. But yeah, I liked it and actually made a really good michelada. I don't know if you like micheladas. I love micheladas. Dude. Yeah. It, with the turmeric and the ginger, just blended really. well. I was well. gonna say that actually looked sound like it would be pretty good because yeah. turmeric's got a little almost like a pepper spice to it. So yeah. that'd be perfect. I think it'll have that kick at the end exactly. too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think um yeah, I totally fish that to Daryl. There you go. Because like Daryl's. Yeah, he jumps on everything. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, our, uh, one of our sponsors at the Craft Lounge in Beaumont, California, he'll probably not be happy with that. <laughs> he wasn't a big fan of it, but oh. some people like that beer. So when we made it, I, I told Josh, I was like, this is a type of beer, you know, what, usually with R&D, like one-off beers, you'll have a group of 10 people, and you'll get like three or four that will really love it, and the rest will hate it, you know. It, that's why that's what's great about craft beer is you can look up at a tap menu and there's you know 12 14 different beers and there's a beer for everybody it's true that yeah like like this lavender it's not my thing but i can tell you i can find <laughs> three four five things on savage wood that i love right yeah but I'm, i i am not a fan of this lavender and this, anything even on lotion i'm not getting lavender or whatever this is <laughs> yeah i was gonna say <laughs> was one like, of the closest <laughs> Give one me aloe. Yeah. <laughs> one of the closest times I ever liked lavender in a beer is mm. someone paired lavender with lime. Okay. And for some odd reason, that combination actually was pretty decent. Okay. Like the lime bite, like cut through that soapiness of the lavender. Mm. The only downside was as that beer aged, the lavender like just took over and it just mm. became like straight, like drinkable soap. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> can't do it. I can't do it. You know? It's like with your kids, drink this, lavender. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Going to clean your insides. Yeah. This one's not uh, This one's not bad. Like, like I said, I, I can, can tolerate yeah, it. No, yeah, I could, I, could, I could finish this, which usually I don't finish any lavenders. Right. Yeah. But am I going to get it? No. Yeah. So I just yeah. want to keep it real. But mm-hmm. I know there's people that come here for the lavender. So, and that's cool because that's their thing. Not right? my thing, though. Not my thing. Well, that's the thing about beer is, uh, as a medium, uh-huh. it's got a whole wide range of possibilities, yeah. like almost infinite possibilities. Uh-huh. You know, that's the part, as a home brewer, I love experimenting with. It's just trying different things. Like, uh, I got a couple beers out my car right now uh-huh. that, you know, I was going to surprise people with. I got uh-huh. a, one beer. It's a, a porter I did three years ago. Threw a wild yeast on it. I'm just curious to see what the fuck happened with yeah, it. Yeah, I like that, the wildness, yeah. too, Wild right? yeast on a porter. Yeah. You normally see it with the pale ales, but you don't really mm-hmm. see it with the porter. So I'm like, okay, let's see what see what happens. Yeah, and I think, <laughs> like, with San Diego, too, going back to is like, you know, you have the opportunity to be crazy. Yeah, You know, exactly. like, um... Like well, I, I mean, was, this is a perfect environment for yeah. it because, I mean, you got 300 breweries to compete with. Yeah. And you, you have gotta, to be you out gotta there. bring your game. You, yeah, know? Yeah, like, you, yeah. gotta have you, you can only make so many just straight up like IPAs, yeah. L's, and mm-hmm. porters and stouts. You gotta throw all the crazy flavors yeah. in there just to be unique and be different than everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then also another big deal that most people don't realize is the can art. So like what you guys have with your oh, special yeah. release beer, yeah. the can art is on point and that it definitely yeah, screams you. San Diego. I was gonna say our, our buddy Jose who was on the podcast earlier, like. His whole MO when it comes to buying beer is the can art. He'll tell yeah. you, like, firsthand, is like, I will buy a beer directly off of the can art. Ooh. He's like, been burned I before. Believe I yeah. believe that. He's been burned before, but sometimes you get some good beer. Yeah, he, he says, yeah. like, beers he would normally never try, he will try because of the can art. Right? It's true. You know? Like, the first time I had Nova was because of the can art. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nova yeah. Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love that and beer. And I was like, I, I was just bright. Yep. I was sleepy just, just, as hell, <laughs> yeah. and I went to bed and I was like, hey, that looks cool. Yeah. Which yeah. one did you have? Do you remember? Um, I had the Crushable IPA. I don't know which IPA I on got, like, top the of my mo- head. I got, like, the Momo Haze. And mm, I think it was the Momo Haze. Momo Haze, yeah. that's it one of my favorites. It was a Haze favorites. for sure. Yeah, that's yeah, one of my favorites. Yeah, for sure. 
They're good. They they vote. They're always like uh, they're hitting us up. They 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 want us to do a show down at. Down oh yeah, there. you should because yeah. you know they were the one the first to you know co- open up after COVID. You're right. And then yeah. at Third Avenue, you know they're yeah. really doing it like. Yeah, I had I, a, uh, I have a weird like like six degrees of separation because I ran it. I I believe it at six degrees. Because uh, the it's guy who true. the guy who owns that brewery or runs that brewery, I feel like I ran into his buddy, his friend, at Coachella. Okay. I, yeah, like his his buddy was like hanging out there, and he's like, "You got to check out my friend's brewery in San Diego." Mm-hmm. And for the longest time, I couldn't remember what the fuck the name of the brewery. And then Justin here ended up getting that Nova, and I was like, "I think that's the brewery," you know, because mm-hmm. it's from Brazil. You know, it's like got that Brazilian connection. Yeah. So and I was like, I think it's the guy. I, I'm, I'm really I want to meet them because there's such a Brazilian uh, community in San Diego. Yeah. It's where you're with um, jujitsu. Yep. Nice. Like, yes. um, so, JJ. Yeah, so like you know, mixed martial arts and jujitsu right. is really like the mecca in San Diego, yep. and it's 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 pretty crazy that you know they're bringing their culture to San Diego with like beer wise. That's cool. So it would be really good like once they're on here on this podcast, oh, yeah. to tell their story. Yeah. It's it's pretty awesome. For sure. Like, and that's the thing I love it with Ariel. You know, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's the thing I love with the whole beer community is it, it just it doesn't it together. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. It's yeah. like. Let's let's have a pint. Let's relax, have mm-hmm. a have a beer, and just you know call it a day and just Absolutely. shoot the shit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like it's such a good medium for throwing whatever you got local mm-hmm. fruit, local vegetables, like local whatever yeah, you exactly. want. Exactly, you know? and just yeah. like your culture, yeah. like whatever you like, whatever you think you like, yeah. and think will will go good together. Yeah, and then you get to be creative, you know. And then Absolutely, there's no like wrong. No, there isn't. Yeah. There never really and is. And even if it, it tastes gross, it's still not wrong. It's not, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. Like, you tried it. it well, awesome. it, at that point, it just becomes an experiment that you can, like, improve upon. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. For sure. <laughs> but, guys, the wife is calling. We have a newborn, so I got to take this. Uh, and there's a perfect opportunity to get rich here. That's perfect. Uh, Let's yeah. get him and over here. Please open him up. Yeah, and the beer, <laughs> the beer dad ac- absolutely understands because we yes. have our kids, our, our recent kids, are almost the same age. So awesome. I know exactly where you're at. Yeah, yeah. So, like, mine are eight and three months old. Ooh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. COVID baby. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank awesome. you, brother. Thank Thanks for having pleasure. us. Yes. Much, Thank dude. you for the this invite. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was beers. scared to be on here. But you're good, bro. Thank you. I got, got you. you. You know what? Cheers. Cheers, Cheers brother. Cheers to that. Salud. Yeah. Sampai. Mabuhai. Mano, right? Manapono. 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 Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. Man, that's right. fun. Let's I even go say uh, so far as Bahala like Once a month. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, very good. Yeah. So yeah, this that, is good. It is good. No, I, I I'm actually, I, I'm not a lavender fan, but I, I'm kind of digging it. I'm not gonna lie. It's actually doing pretty good. Here. You know, it's a very, very unique flavor for a beer. This is probably the, you know. I'm gonna. Get, I'm pretty sure this is the only l- beer I've ever had with lavender. I'm pretty sure, uh, but this is really, really interesting. I was gonna say I've had a few. That's why I, I have to say it's not my, not, not a fan favorite, but okay. they did a good job. They blended this actually a lot better than I expected. Like I saw it on the board, and I was like, I'm gonna avoid that like the fucking plague. Absolutely. But obviously, they brought it to my attention. Why not? Yeah. Hey. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Yeah. How are you? Good, how are you? Have a seat. Jump on in. All right. <laughs> this way or this way? Yeah, either way. Yeah. Like Whatever is more comfortable. All right. How you doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? Good, good. 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 And go ahead and introduce yourself. All right. Uh, my name is uh, Rich Lange. I'm the uh, part of the part of the crew of uh, local beer brand. Nice. Awesome. Okay, well, welcome. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. You're cool. I really enjoy a lot of your swag. We're, oh, we're already awesome. talking. <laughs> We actually talked at the beginning of the podcast. Uh, we all want to get one of your hats with the uh, bottle opener. Uh, yeah, that, that thing's cool, right? <laughs> it's well, like you gotta have it, right? Yeah. I'm I mean, like, I'm surprised that I haven't seen more of those things. Like, right? I remember seeing them, but yeah, you're right. I don't see them for sale like all the time. He's like, I'm not even a hat guy. Like, I don't wear hats on the general. Uh huh. But I saw that, and I was like, fuck, I might have to. We have to get that. <laughs> well, there's the thing. Like once, yeah. once you see them, it's like, man, well, uh, like, why, why, yeah, why don't yeah. I have one? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, so just to show off, you just here you go, man. Yeah. 
So uh, what what got you started? I know uh, Ryan kind of gave up some of your secrets a little bit earlier about you know what your kind of graphic design background and um, you know what you do now and uh, what got you into the beer industry and. Well, I mean, I do like to partake in the beer. Right. I'm, I'm not the, uh, you know, the beer connoisseur as, um, you know, Dennis or, or Ryan is. But, um, um, I mean, we just got into it because, you know, we're, we're beer fans. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I'm a graphic designer. So it, it kind of wanted to, you know, kind of show our love in beer. But, I mean... As far as my knowledge in, in graphic design is kind of promote, yeah. and also like you know it being a local beer. I was gonna say San Diego. I mean, as a craft beer mecca of sorts, yeah. you know, it's like you're properly located right here. But yeah, yeah, local beer. It's like you're you're local. You know, right. you, you got everything under the sun right here. Right, well, I mean, right. one one of the hashtags that we always like to use, like whenever we're posting pictures, where is drink local. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, I mean, it it, it makes sense, right? Like uh, you know. As far as the whole, you know, support local, yeah, it, it, it really everything comes back to the community, and, and we want to show yep. show the support. So through our brand, you know, it's we're supporting the community. We're from the community, yeah. so yeah. It, it it makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah and it's kind of cool. You, you're able to get platforms, you know, like here, where you can showcase that and really kind of like connect with the community in that regard. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, it's like uh, when, when people, like, outside of the community see, what, you know, see the brand yeah. or it, it kind of, you know, it, be- it gives them interest in, in you know, what, what we have to offer. And, and also when we do collaborations with breweries, it, it, it'll, you know, it, it gives them, you know, a reason to come out here and try, try yeah. you know. Yeah, I, it, it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you sell some product, they sell some beer. You know, it's like you're supporting local, you're supporting the community. Everyone's kind of coming in. Everyone's supporting each other, basically. I mean, that's you, how, know. That, you know, that's that's like a dream, uh, you know, scenario, right? Every, oh, yeah. Everybody, it's all good vibes around, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. You're, you're and we were just talking about, you know, like one of the few benefits of being human in this world is a beer. You know, like everyone just kind of has a beer. They hang out. They toast each other they shoot the shit they don't have to speak the same language or be the same culture but they all just get along and they yep. yeah. have their beer and they just they just make it happen you know they get along you know exactly it, it, it brings people together oh, definitely so. yeah so i mean it, it's it, it seemed natural for us to kind of you know want to be a part of that and want to you know as far as give back and and you know, be part of that part of it all. Oh yeah, awesome. I, I get that. So, uh, so Rich, are you originally from? You're originally from San Diego, right? What part of San Diego? Um, well, actually, I'm not originally from San Diego. I, I was, I lived in San Diego. I have okay. a family in San Diego, okay. uh, in the Mira Mesa area. That's where I grew up. Yeah, <laughs> Mira Mesa, uh, Rancho Penasquitas. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, actually, down this, those apartments, I forgot the name of it, but. But um, yeah, I used to live. I don't know. Dennis, Dennis is in Long Beach, but he's originally from Chula Vista. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, Mira Mesa. Mira Mesa. Yeah. The Mecca. Yeah. The Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ry- Ryan and I actually wait. Uh, it's funny because we met each other later in life through our careers, and but we both went to Mira Mesa High School. <laughs> oh, funny. So yeah, we were uh, both marauders, and so that's why. Uh, like I love his mecca hat because I'm like, dude, that's like, uh, that's where I grew up. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Cause yeah, m- a couple of my cousins uh, they went to Mira Mesa. Cool. Awesome. I don't know what year were you? Were you? Two thousand class of two thousand one. Oh okay. Now so. my my cousins was uh, what, ninety two I think. Ninety two. Yeah, yeah. A little yeah. bit before my time. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, a little bit. Just a bit. Just probably, <laughs> with, probably with some of my family though. You never know. Yeah. And so yeah, I mean, I I grew up down here and um, you know it's. I spent most of my life down here, and then I moved up to the Inland Empire. So I'm up, we're, oh. we're, at, we're both of us were in Riverside County. So oh, nice. He's, we're both kind of in the desert area. So uh, I mean, know. I'm I, I my uh, my full time job is um, in Rancho Cucamonga. So Rancho okay. Cucamonga. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know exactly. Actually, you're by a really really cool brewery. Have you ever been to Kings Brewery? No. So you got to go check them out. They're right there in Rancho Cucamonga. Um, 
Every Friday they have a uh, special release. They call it it's their Froze A line. Josh has had some of these. They're pretty good. It's yeah. super popular. When you get there on Fridays, you'll see a line wrapped around the whole entire building. Really? People go. They come for miles, and they release it's a, like a, a heavily uh, fruited sour beer. Huh. And um, it's really, really popular. We've had a, quite a few of them. And, uh, yeah, they're right there in Rancho Cucamonga off of Valley, I think it is. Well, it's funny because Rancho Cucamonga, when it comes to, like, sour beers, you get kind of, like, two. You got King's, which is kind of like and the— And Sandbox, which is close by, too. Yeah, and then there's— uh, Oh, damn, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. Yeah. There's another one, in, but they do, like, traditional sours, like traditional, old school yeah. sours. And they're also really, really like, I think it's Cellar Maker? No. Celador, maybe something. About something I think it's like Celador, that. but but again, you know, okay. you, you get some really good breweries yeah, out there too. Yeah, right so there. I'll have to check them yeah, out. Yeah, check them out for sure. Check out Kings Brewing. Um, yeah, Kings is. They they're, they're they're a big deal out yeah, there. They, yeah, they, yeah, they do. If some you good ask stuff. anybody in in that area, they'll probably tell you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm yeah. surprised. I, I've been I've been well, I work out there six years now, and. Uh, well, they've only been out there what maybe a year. Uh, like it's longer than that. I okay, think. Th- yeah. I don't think they've been out there that long. Okay. Yeah. Well, d- you know, definitely, I- I'm gonna have to check them out. When I'm yeah, I'll I'll show you when when we're done here. I'll show you some pictures of some of their beers. It's like super thick, like heavily <laughs> fruited, um, insane flavors. Like the bet one of the best beers I've had probably this year that I definitely rank in my top five. They call it the Fluffer Nutter. And it's nice. uh, <laughs> it's basically a peanut butter and jelly sour. So you got oh, notes wow. of peanut butter. You got notes of like actual like Concord jelly, and then uh, they throw some like marshmallow in there to thicken it up. Uh, just really crazy, insane beer. Like yeah. you're, you're just you're drinking it, and you're like, man, that's not a beer, that's a dessert. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm getting hungry. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not thirsty. I'm yeah. getting hungry. Yeah, they do a good <laughs> job. So definitely, if you're in that area, check cool. them out. And if you're ever there on a Friday and you you know take a lunch or whatever i think their release is usually about one or two o'clock in the afternoon okay. oh, they'll have a line okay. and you know they have a limit of like four or five four packs per person and they sell out within hours oh yeah. well so, ah, so, all yeah, right. check them out yeah for sure so, but that's cool yeah no we really like uh, a lot of your swag that you make a lot you're great did you do you did the can art for this release for the 619 yeah yeah nice. yeah really Good enjoyed it you know did the whole uh you know, state classy theme. <laughs> Absolutely. San Diego. Good play on words, man. Yeah. Good play on words. It's yeah. like, you, you know exactly what you're getting with that one. Like, yeah. It's like, you had to be like under a rock somewhere. You know? I mean, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, it worked. Yeah, no, and you guys chose the right coloring. Every, I mean, everything like, it popped on that for sure for San Diego. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, I, hopefully you guys sold some swag tonight. I've been watching people. I see a lot of people here wearing, uh, a good mix of everybody's hats so i think good. so yeah like um a lot of sd hats uh yeah we, we sell some shirts yeah we, al- we also have um some shirts if you couldn't make it out to the event you know you could uh, pre-order them okay yeah, yeah awesome good so um you guys uh, you have a website right what's your website um it's uh, localbeerbrand.com localbeerbrand.com so okay. definitely check those guys out but also um yeah our instagram is, is also local beer brand okay. and uh yeah yeah, so we're following each other uh, on on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. You guys are on Facebook, so that's awesome. Congratulations yeah, cool. on everything that you've been doing so far, and uh, I hope that you know, just like us, kind of in the same situation. I mean, we we just barely started. I mean, we've been doing this for not year. even not even a year. I think our we'll hit our one year anniversary in August. August, okay. Um, okay. And and we started with one. Yeti microphone and a laptop, <laughs> and now you can see where hey, we're at now. Hey, it looks like yeah, you guys are uh, <laughs> we're you're we, growing. Yeah, we've we've grown. We started with uh, family and friends listening to us. To now we're over fifteen hundred listeners. Oh, um, that's awesome. Within and we're only this is episode twenty one that we're recording right now. So it's just within yeah, less than a year, like grown like more than we ever thought it would, and it's really cool because. This is something that a uh, passion of mine and Josh's. You know, I love craft beer. He loves home brewing, and it just works. And people like to listen to us because, and the way to describe our show is like, it, it feels like I'm just sitting down with a bunch of buddies and having beers. And yeah, that's, that's all it's about. Much. You know, <laughs> that's, so. that's pretty much how it is. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I love like hearing people talk. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Well, uh, that's the thing is, yeah, I love this. For me, it's also like an awesome platform to connect with people. Yeah. You know, like there's no there's no like script or I mean no. at least it's not 
it doesn't feel like you're, here's, you know, here's my script actors. right here. <laughs> just, I've got, okay. we just want to know got, what beers. I've got the names of the beers <laughs> written Seems down. Legit. And then I've got, I've got, well, they wrote down Daryl's name so that I didn't butcher it. Right. Cause I need to know the owner of the brewery. And I've got, um, the master brewer here, or the head brewer, Zach Hayes. And then I got the beer tenders names up there. <laughs> that, that's my script. That's ah. what I went <laughs> off of. Yeah. You just got to know who's who. Right. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to butcher anybody's names, but um, but yeah, no, they great beer here at Savage Wood, and yeah, and great well, times, great people. You guys got some cool swag here. Yeah, so. I think uh, you know, I feel like it, it all worked mm. out for yeah. sure. Pretty actually, I'm probably gonna go buy a hat here. And I, I, need, I don't yeah. ever buy hats. So I'm gonna go buy a hat. I here. need a hat with a <laughs> bottle opener. <laughs> yes. no, I, 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 I like your guys' shirt too. Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. These, these are uh, are available um, on uh, well, right now we're on Bonfire, so you can get our shirts on Bonfire. So. Uh, check us out. We have shirts, tank tops, gr- ladies' tanks. Um, we actually have some COVID masks. <laughs> um, our COVID masks are actually um, those 100% of the profits. That goes to um, the Gary Sinise Foundation, which is a foundation for first responders. Oh, so awesome. Okay. Yeah, so we, we sold those. And, I, and I, I just put those up for random, and I thought this whole thing was going to end. And then, what was it, yesterday or today, the governor said, everyone put your mask back on. So. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, maybe. <laughs> so maybe we'll sell some more masks and help <laughs> out Gary Sinise. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Yeah, cool. But uh, thanks for joining us, Rich. I really uh, thank appreciate thank it. You. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And also, Can, yeah, um, I mean, let's, uh, you know, let's keep keep going with this absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Making yeah, good sure. beer, making good artwork, you know, and just combining the two because, I mean, it's, they're both arts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Like, you know, a year, year from now, like, uh, you guys will be even way bigger. And yeah, that's right. Well, likewise, you guys, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. We can, awesome. all, we can all grow with each other. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I, uh, Thank, thanks I'm a lot for coming by, Rich. Yep. Appreciate Thank it. you. Pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Cheers to that. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> cool, guys. All right. Thank you. Mm. All right, Josh. Well, we've uh, we've yeah. sampled some great beers yeah. here at Savage Wood Brewing here in San Diego, California. Uh, I'm pretty impressed. I mean, they weren't on my radar until now, but man, they first time here, and yeah. definitely not going to be my last time not for my, sure. No, e- yeah, definitely not my yeah. last. Definitely some good shit. Um, I will say that this is an awesome night. Thank you for hooking this up. Happy birthday! As as far <laughs> as a birthday present, this is a fucking awesome birthday present. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, and uh, I'm not a hat guy, but I'm going to go buy myself a fucking... Uh, let's, let's buy a hat. I'm going to go buy a fucking let's, hat. Let's, let's buy a hat. Let's have some beers. Where the hell is Jose and Andrew? I don't know. They, they fucking disappeared here. I but think Jose went and found Tiffany. What do you think? Yeah, he might have found Tiffany. All right. All right. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's end this show, Josh. Okay. Thank you. Uh, shout out to the Craft, uh, Craft Lounge in Beaumont, yep, California. Yep. Our sponsors, our partners, Jimmy... I'm yep. so stoked that you guys are opening again. Yes. I was there and earlier today. They're doing great. They got everything set up. They got fucking 64-ounce growlers, 32-ounce growlers, all that's, the T-shirts. That's awesome. It looks fucking beautiful in there. Jimmy, I, mean, I want a shirt. Yeah. I'm just going to throw that <laughs> yeah, out there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So shout out to those guys. We'll yeah. be seeing you soon for another episode. Yep. So we'll uh, get some episodes in at the Craft Lounge. We'll get some more episodes on the road. I know Devin wants to see us out yep. at Desert yep. Beer Company. Yeah, I mean, he's all open. He's got a crowler machine now. I saw that. That's a fucking, fucking awesome. Fucking amazing. And it looks yeah. great, man. Yeah. I told I, him, I was like, I want to hit him up I was for watching that a shit. video, and I was like, dude, this is like one of those, like, satisfying <laughs> videos that you can just watch over and over again, watching that freaking <laughs> yeah, can yeah, spin. Yeah. So that's freaking awesome. All yeah. right, Josh. Well, cheers to you, brother. Cheers. Happy birthday. Yep, thank and, you. And uh, cheers to everybody else. Drink responsibly. Drink local. And, again, shout out to local beer brand, uh, Gain Mana, Monopano, uh, my good friend Ryan. Go yep. check those guys out on Instagram, Facebook, and websites. And, and Savage, Savage Wood, Wood Brewing. Fucking great beer. Nailed it. We yeah, love your great. double IPA. We love your yeah. beers. So Good thanks beers. for thanks for joining us here on the Beer Dad and Brood Podcast. As always, I'm your host, the Beer Dad himself, Justin Allen, joined by the Brood Man, Joshua Kunkel. It's Cheers. his birthday. This mm-hmm. is episode 21. Thanks for joining and us. Happy Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. <laughs> they also practice by drinking the urine of a ram. The, the what? They drink ram's piss. Because of the pH balance? No, because if you can drink ram's piss, fuck, you can drink almost anything. <laughs> she said fuck. Oh, what is the malted liquor? What gets you drunk or quicker? What comes in bottles or in cans? Beer. Can't get enough of it. Beer. How we really love it. Beer. Makes me think I'm a man. Beer. I can kiss and hug it. Beer. But I'd rather chug it. Beer. Got my belly out to here. Beer. I could not refuse it. Beer. I could really use it. Beer, beer, beer. Beer, 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 beer. beer. I can't remember how much I have had 
I drink a 12 pack with my dad. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the Beer Dad and Brew podcast brought to you by the Craft Lounge in Beaumont, California. Drink responsibly, drink local, and always drink with your friends. Cheers. Cheers.